one does not simply walk into Mordor. The Land of Shadow. Hey, welcome everybody. In today's Shadowcast, we are focusing on one of Tolkien's most enduring creations, the wild wargs of Middle-earth. Um, uh, we will be focusing on the origins of this cunning and frightful beast that Tolkien based upon the wild wolves found in the Black Forest in Germanic and Old Norse legends. Now we're focusing and featuring the war today because you guys voted uh, for this to be our very first Brazen Beast video. So you guys are getting exactly what you're asking for. Um, if you haven't yet checked out the uh, introductory Brazen Beast video, you can go here or you can go to our landofshadow.com pages uh, under the Brazen Beast section and select on the Wild Wargs of Middle-earth to find out everything you need to know. Um, so let's go ahead and travel deep into the forest of Mirkwood and the Misty Mountains and track the evil wargs in Tolkien's world of fantasy. In the Red Book of Westmarch, wargs are described as large, evil beasts in wolf-like form. During the years leading up to the War of the Ring, they, like all evil creatures in Middle-earth, were drawn to the power of Mordor. They prowled along the eastern edges of the Misty Mountains and the Forest of Mirkwood, troubling the woodsmen of Rovanion. Gandalf, Bilbo, and the dwarves were surrounded in the pine forest east of the Misty Mountains in the year 2941 of the Third Age, and the wizard was able to understand their language. These were no ordinary wolves, but were large evil wargs that raided the settlements of men along with the goblins and orcs of the Misty Mountains. These were sentient creatures that could reason and had speech. They allowed the goblins to ride them like steeds into battle. During the Battle of Five Armies, the wargs played a major part as mounts for the goblin attack on the Lonely Mountain. Bolg, son of Azog, led his army into the Valley of Dale, and with the aid of the wargs, their victory seemed certain. But for the coming of the eagles in the last minutes of the battle. In the warg attack on the Company of the Ring in Eregion, in the year 3019, Gandalf called the mighty warg chieftain a Hound of Sauron indicating that he was in the service of the Dark Lord. These were the first wargs to cross over the mountains into the west, signaling the growing power of Mordor. Though not mentioned specifically, warg riders in the service of Saruman and Sauron likely played a part in the Battle of Helm's Deep, the Pelennor Fields, and the Black Gate as well as the Battle of Dale and Lothlorien during the War of the Ring. Beyond these bare facts and descriptions in the Red Book of Westmarch, there is little known about these creatures. However, they have a long history in Beleriand and Middle-earth, and in the ancient writings of the Elves, and in the Silmarillion and other tales of Middle-earth, it is believed that the origin of the wargs can be traced back to Sauron, who was in the service of his master, Morgoth. During the early years of the First Age, Sauron conquered the island fortress of Tol Garhoth, and while there bred through foul craft and sorcery the first werewolves of Middle-earth 
to combat Huon, the Hound of Valinor. It is thought that Sauron, who often took the form of a wolf himself, bred wolves with other foul creatures, trapping in them dark spirits. Possibly one of the fallen Maea was imprisoned in the flesh of these monstrous creations. The first of these was Draglan, meaning the blue wolf, a werewolf of great power. Draglan fathered an evil brood and was the sire of all werewolves that troubled Beleriand. He was slain by Huon, the mighty hound of Valinor, during the quest for the Cimmeril. Baron and Luthien used his pelt to sneak into Angband. Before his death, Draglan sired Karkaroth, whose name meant Red Maul, and who became the greatest of all wolf creatures in Arda. He was a powerful ally of Morgoth. After Huon defeated Draglan and Sauron, Morgoth decided to create a werewolf strong enough to kill Huon, feeding Karkaroth with elvish and manis flesh, and imparting him with great power. The monstrous werewolf mortally wounded both Huan and Baron after swallowing one of the Cimmerils. He was also badly hurt and died of his wounds. Before his death, Karkaroth sired his own evil brood, and it is believed that the wargs of the Third Age were descended from this line of Draglan and Karkaroth. These evil wargs could think and had the power of speech, suggesting they had fear, meaning they had a sentient soul. This is what we know of the wargs from the Tolkien canon, the written works of Professor Tolkien. In the expanded mythology of Middle-earth, based on films, streaming shows, and games, we have seen the addition of several distinct races of warg. In the Book of Fire, found in the Library of Shadow, much was discovered. In the north, out of Gundabad and the Misty Mountains, we have the Northern Warg, a great dark brute that looks much like a large wolf. These brazen beasts were said to have hunted the company of dwarves and fought in the Battle of Five Armies. Another breed is the Southern Warg that was bred in the lands of Far Harad in the jungles beyond the sea and deserts. These ferocious beasts came out of the primeval forest of the tropics. There were also wargs that came out of the far east, from the desolate wastelands beyond the Sea of Rune. These foul beasts were said to be large predators with gray-black hides and long, sharp teeth. Finally, we had the wargs of Mordor. From the southlands, found along the Sea of Nernan. These brazen beasts were wild-eyed and vicious creatures filled with a madness to kill. In the latter Third Age, Sauron drew all of these races of warg into Mordor, and in the breeding dens of Barad-dûr, terrible monstrosities were created for the coming war. One such creature was said to be named a Karagor by the Uruks and was a huge ravenous beast which attacked in large packs, ripping straight through its enemies to devour its prey. These huge monstrous beasts somehow escaped into the wilds east of the Dark Tower and would attack orc camps along the borders of Gorgor. The orcs would capture them to make of them terrible steeds to guard the Dark Tower. The wargs of Middle-earth were terrible brazen beasts that could reason and speak in their own savage tongue. Running in packs like wolves, they would devour any living thing under the darkness of night. 
The wargs of the second and third ages joined with orcs and goblins, making raiding parties on the settlements of men and elves in the east beyond the Misty Mountains. In Sauron's wars against the west, he enlisted legions of warg riders to assault his enemies. With the iron fist of the orc and the savage maul of the warg, the Dark Lord of Mordor intended to overrun all the lands of Middle-earth with his vast armies. If the ring had not been cast back into the fires of Orodruin, he would have succeeded in his plan to cover Middle-earth in a shadow without end. Well, everybody, I guess that wraps up today's Shadowcast. I hope you enjoyed this latest lore video of the Brazen Beasts featuring the wargs of Middle-earth. Um, so, until next time, I hope to find you in the dark woods of Rovanion, where Boromir said, The wolf that one hears is worse than the orc that one fears. <laughs> <laughs>